FRLD's Mystery Theater, tonight at 9.07. When a bride returns from her honeymoon and finds her husband dead, the spine-tingling adventure starts like this. I'm not out of my mind. I didn't say you were. No, but everybody else does, and I'm not. I'm not. I don't mean you're off crazy because you had a bad dream. It was no dream. It happened. I tell you, it happened. No, ma'am, it didn't. You see, it couldn't have. A thing like that to happen. Impossible. Lois Nettleton and Tony Roberts star in Honeymoon with Death. Tonight at 9.07 on KRLD's Mystery Theater. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... to the sound of suspense, to the fear you can hear. A psychiatrist once said that the human brain is like a spider's web. Together, all the strands are strong, but taken one by one, each can easily be broken and the web destroyed. There are countless cases of human brains broken and smashed in just this way, step by step, strand by strand. And I can't Help wondering, is this what happened to young Jennifer Brady? Please, officer, I'm not out of my mind. I didn't say you were. No, but everybody else does, and I'm not. I'm not. I don't mean you're off crazy because you had a bad dream. It was no dream. It happened. I tell you, it happened. No, ma'am, it didn't. You see, it couldn't have. A thing like that to happen. Impossible. <laughs> mystery drama, Honeymoon with Death, was written especially for the Radio Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Lois Nettleton. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K Cereal. I'll be back shortly with Act One. <laughs> Why do some people think Bud is sort of special? Go ahead and find out why. With a Bud. Or maybe with the Budweiser label. Without making a big deal of it, the label just sort of lays it on the line. It lists ingredients and comes right out and tells you, too, very simply, how the Budweiser people feel about the beer they brew. And that sort of adds up to this. That brewing beer right does make a difference. Okay? When you say Bud solve your shopping problems? The Better Business Bureau knows. I saw this ad offering jobs to truck drivers. And what they were really selling was a training course that could cost me 900 bucks. Do these schools guarantee a job when you're through with the course? Reputable schools do not claim to guarantee jobs to all graduates. Who are you? I'm the man from your Better Business Bureau. And before you make a down payment on a training school contract, get the facts. Any contract you sign will probably make you pay for the course without getting you a job. Thanks for the tip, buddy. Not at all. That's what better business bureaus are for. To help people to get a fair deal. Thanks, Jim.
Jennifer Brady thinks she's going out of her mind. What strange thing happened that couldn't have happened? Perhaps we can find out together. It was a wonderful honeymoon, Howard. I can't tell you how much I enjoyed it. Adored it. But you know something? Howard, you know something? What, Jennifer, what? It's wonderful to be back home. These last ten days driving back from San Francisco, I kept thinking, when, oh, when will I be back in my own bedroom, in my own bed, in my own little old New York brownstone house? Oh, I shouldn't have said that, should I? What? Said what, Jennifer? Am I bothering you with all my chatter, Howard? Bothering me? How could you possibly bother me, sweetheart? I'm just trying to catch up with all that mail Margaret left on the living room table. Oh, hey. I haven't seen that negligee before. I saved it for a homecoming night. Like? <laughs> <laughs> I can see a whole month of honeymooning hasn't changed you a bit. When I've got a bride as beautiful and sexy as you, our whole life is going to be a honeymoon. Now, tell me, what was it you shouldn't have said? What? Oh, I've forgotten. Or something about your own little old New York brownstone house. Oh, well, what I meant, it's not just mine anymore. It's yours now, too. Mm, and your sister Maggie's. You both inherited this old brownstone from your father. Though, I must say, I think that you, I mean, we, have the better of the bargain. What do you mean? I much prefer this top floor apartment, don't you? Oh, yes. Luckily, Maggie always preferred the downstairs part. No climbing stairs. Well, stairs won't bother me. I'll take them two, three at a time, knowing that you're waiting at the top of them. Oh, darling. Mm -hmm. Well, you uh, better finish brushing your hair. I'll finish that mail in the living room. Howard? Yes? About the car. What about it? You think it's safe parked out in the street? One night won't hurt. I'd feel awful if anything happened to it. <laughs> you know... Sometimes on our honeymoon trip, I couldn't help wondering which you loved more, your new car or me. <laughs> oh, well, I guess one night in the street is safe enough. You can find a garage tomorrow. Howard, you locked the car. You have the keys, haven't you? Howard? Howard, can't you hear me? I asked you... Howard! Oh. and try to hold on. I'll phone Dr. Sullivan. Maggie! Howard is dead. He's up there in our apartment. Dead. Jennifer, please, now try to control yourself. There's no one named Howard here. What? What do you mean? No one named Howard? You know Howard Lansing, my husband, the man I've been on a honeymoon with for a whole month and home just a few hours ago and stop looking at me like that. All right. All right. Now, look, Jennifer, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll go upstairs and I'll see if anybody's there. Howard's there. All right, all right. If this Howard is there and if he's dead, then I'll phone the police. All right? Yes. But if he isn't, and I'm going to phone Dr. Sullivan, have him come right over. Now, that agreed? 
What's that? It's just the front door bell, Jeff. Oh, yes, officer? Uh, officer Helmets, ma'am. Uh, Ed Helmets. Anything wrong? No, no. What do you mean, no? My husband's been murdered. He's upstairs dead, a knife in his chest. Jennifer, please. Officer, there is no one upstairs, dead or alive. Well, then, what was all the screaming about? I'm I'm walking the beach just up at the corner, and I hear all this screaming. It's nothing. Believe me, it's nothing. Officer, officer, will you do me a favor? Oh, sure, if I can. Would you, would you go upstairs, please, and see for yourself? Officer, my sister is, is a, a highly emotional woman. Please? Would you please? Sure. Make you feel any better? Sure. Oh, Jen. Jen, what am I going to do with you? You know what Dr. Sullivan said. Dr. Sullivan? He said if you had another one of these attacks, you were going to have to be... I am not having an attack. I am as sane as you are. Don't look at me like that, Maggie. I am. Well, well, officer. Well, there's nobody up there, ma'am. Nobody. But there is somebody. My husband, Howard. He's sitting in a chair with a knife in his chest, blood all over. No, 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 ma'am. But that, that's impossible. Impossible, I tell you. It's in, impossible. I couldn't. Maybe you want to see for yourself, huh? I, I'll go up with Officer, you. Officer, thank you very much, but there's no need. I do want to see for myself, will you? Sure. Uh, I'll come with you. Oh, uh, no, on second thought, what's the use? I mean, I'm... I'm really very tired of this sort of thing. Uh, what sort of thing? Never mind, officer. Just, uh... You go ahead. Now, uh, is this the room where you, uh, thought that, uh... Huh? I can't believe it. It's impossible. Uh, you can see for yourself. Five uh... minutes ago. Five minutes ago, I tell you. In this chair. He was sitting back in this chair, and there was a knife sticking out of his chest. The mail. The mail was scattered all over the floor. Mail? We'd just come back from our honeymoon. We'd only been in the house a few hours. And Maggie had left all the mail that had collected for a month on the table. On this table. Well, you can see, ma'am. Uh, no mail. And blood. There was blood on the carpet, some in the mail. Well, no mail, no blood. You don't mind me saying so. I think you... Well, maybe you had a dream, a nightmare, huh? Please. I'm not out of my mind. I, I didn't say you were. No, but everybody else does, and I'm not. I'm not. It, it don't mean you're off your, uh, out of your mind because you had a bad dream. It was no dream. It happened. I tell you, it happened. Howard was here in the living room reading the mail. I was talking to him from the bedroom. I had just taken a bath and I was brushing my hair. And... Wait. I know. I know. I hadn't emptied the tub. The water's still there. It must be. I'll, I'll show you. I don't understand it. Tub's bone dry, ma'am. Hasn't been used. Now, not, not tonight, anyway. His clothes. Howard's clothes. He'd empty his suitcases and put his clothes in the closet. His, his suitcases, too. Just ladies' clothes. Yours, ma'am? Yes. Uh, 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 now, hey, now, hey. Uh, don't, don't cry. I, um... Uh... <laughs> hey, look, look, this dream you had. It was no dream. Okay, okay, so maybe you imagined... The... I didn't imagine anything. <laughs> Do you imagine a husband? Do you imagine a month-long honeymoon? Do you imagine a man in a chair with a knife in his chest? Oh, I, I, I got to admit, you, you, you'd have to have a darn strong imagination. To... But uh, they tell me that's what artists got. Artists? Oh, you are an artist, aren't you? That painting there on the easel? Oh, that... It's just a hobby... I haven't touched that since I left on my honeymoon. No? What do you mean? Uh, how long does it take paint to dry? Oh, a day, thereabouts. Well, oh, this paint's still wet. Plenty wet. Look at my finger. 
Oh, now, don't, don't start <gasps> crying again. Uh, a, a woman crying, it makes me feel awful. I'm sorry. Look, um... When have you dreamed it or imagined it? I didn't. Uh, yeah. I didn't. Oh, yeah, well... Uh, um, I know, I know I've had spells. Spells? Uh, what what kind of spells? Oh, uh, I've always been high-strung, nervous, you know. Well, I don't know if I know. I mean, uh, me, well, I'm, I'm the other way. I haven't got a nerve in my whole body. I envy you. You've never been to a psychiatrist. <laughs> a shrink? No, no, me, no, me. You ask me, anybody who goes to a shrink ought to have his head examined. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a joke. You get it? <laughs> yes. Well, then, then, then laugh a little bit. Come on, do you good. I... I can't. No, of course you can't. I'm, I'm sorry. I should have known better than to even try and make a joke. I'm... You, you go to a psychiatrist, huh? Yes. Not regularly. Sometimes. What times? Oh, when I sort of get all keyed up. I start having crying spells and feeling so sad. So sad I could die. Well, what's to feel sad about? A chick like, I mean, uh, excuse me, a pretty girl like you with everything in life to live for. What's to be sad? I don't know. Some people feel sad for no reason at all. They just suffer from depression. Oh, excuse me? Oh, uh, yes, ma'am? Uh, Jennifer, Dr. Sullivan is on his way over. I just phoned him. All right. And, officer, thank you very much for trying to help. Oh, uh, not at all, ma'am. Not at all. Uh, glad to do what I could. Well, I'll show you out. Oh, that's okay. No, no. Sir, I'll come with you. I'll be just a minute, Jen. Officer, I, uh, I wanted to ask you, you, you don't have to say anything about this, do you? I mean, put it in your report or anything? Oh, no, no, no. There's been no damage or anything like that. She get this way often, your sister? Well, often enough. She hallucinates, you see. Huh? Come again? Uh, hallucinate? It, it means... Well, just what you saw. She was totally convinced there was a murdered man up there. Her husband, no less. Well, you saw for yourself. <laughs> Husband. Jennifer's never even had a boyfriend. A cute doll? I mean, a uh, uh, pretty girl like that? Well, it's all part of her condition. She's afraid of people. Men, especially. I wish she could become less afraid, more outgoing. If these spells of hers get any worse, she may lose her mind altogether. Oh, say, I hope not. A sweet kid like that. I, I, sh I sure hope not. I know, so do I. Well, looks like we've had a little shower. Street's wet. It was drizzling a little when I came in. Well, good night, ma'am, and if you need... Wait! Wait! The car! The Jane, car! The car? What car? Howard's. The little red sports car he was so fond of. It... It isn't there. But it was. I know it was, officer. Thanks again, and good night. Good night, ladies. Jen, dear, until Dr. Sullivan gets here, I think you should lie down and rest. Hmm? I don't want to lie down. Well, then just stretch out on the couch and I'll make some tea for us. Well, that's probably Dr. Sullivan now. Oh. <clears throat> yes? <clears throat> Excuse me, ma'am. I just wanted to get something straight. Yes. Uh, your sister, did she say... Oh, ma'am. Yes, officer. Did you say that car was a little sports car? Yes. Why? Well, nothing, only there was one parked out there in the street. What do you mean? Well, we've had a shower, see, and I, I happen to notice uh, the street's dry in one spot. There must have been a car standing there while it was raining. A small car. Officer, please don't make things worse for me or for my sister. I mean, there's nothing unusual about a car being parked in the street. No, only... Good night, officer. Funny, though. Funny. What exactly is it that strikes Officer Helmut as funny? Perhaps we'll know when I return shortly with Act Two. And now another...
the tail of the ball and chain. At Kellogg's Special K presents... presents the good, the bad, and the heavy. Why is that cowboy wearing a ball and chain? Because carrying around extra pounds can be just like carrying around a ball and chain. How symbolic. Well, what it is, senor. Give me the special K breakfast. Here you go. For a special K, it's the milk, on a juice, and coffee. Ah. Hey, don't I know you from some place? You probably don't recognize me with my ball and chain. I used to be ten pounds lighter, but I'm getting back that way by exercising and eating smart at every meal. Starting with this here special K breakfast. What's so special? It's less than 240 calories, 99% fat-free, and delicious. It's going to help me get rid of the sheer ball and chain. I bet your horse will be glad to get out. Another ball and chain, fight the gust. Your happy ending could begin with the Kellogg's Special K breakfast. That's Kellogg's Special K. That's right. Good night. Arrowhead on beautiful Cedar Creek Lake invites you to capture the pleasures of another world filled with fresh, clean, and invigorating air, away from the problems of crowded urban living. Discover the advantages of country living in the midst of stately oaks and colossal sunsets. Swimming, golfing, and pleasant neighbors can be part of your daily life. Arrowhead is a planned community of 1,100 home and condominium sites. Necessities like underground utilities, central water and sewage system, and paved streets with proper drainage have all been prepared. Arrowhead also provides elegant extras like a formal landscaped entrance, a country club with two swimming pools, an 18-hole golf course, six tennis courts with a racket club complex, marine facilities with docks, and a second club for the island. Plus, for your protection, an elaborate electronic security system. Select your home site in this better world. Arrowhead on Cedar Creek Lake. Has a horrible murder been done? Or is Jennifer Braden losing her mind? Did she find the body of her husband, Howard Lansing, seated in the living room with a knife in his chest? Or did she imagine the frightful scene? Is she married? Was there a honeymoon? Oh, here's young patrolman Ed Helmer at the front door of the brownstone house where Jennifer and her sister Maggie live. And it's the following morning. Oh, it's you. Yeah. Uh, well, won't you come in? Thanks. Thank you for, um, what you did last night. Oh, just doing my job, Miss, uh, uh, Mrs., uh, I, I don't know what to call you. I don't know what to call myself. I don't know if I'm Mrs. Howard Lansing or Miss Jennifer Brady. Not after last night. Well, um, suppose I just call you Jennifer. Um, you can call me Ed, uh, Ed Helmet. What, what what are you doing here? Well, uh, I'm off duty, see. I'm I'm on the four to midnight beat, and I just thought I'd drop around and uh, see how you were doing. Oh, well, I'm all right. Do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions, Jennifer? No. It's your job, isn't it? Well, uh, yes and no, yes and no. Uh, the fact, being uh, off duty uh, now, I'm, I'm kind of asking these questions on my own, uh... You know what I mean? I, I don't. Not really. Well, um, I tell you, that car of your husband's... If I didn't just imagine a husband. Yeah, well, if you didn't, that car of his, that little red sports car you mentioned, well, there was a car parked out front last night, and it was a little sports car. If it wasn't there when you left... Well, the space it left. It, it, it rained, remember, while the car was standing at the curb? Oh, yes. So at, at least you were right about there being a car. I mean, you didn't dream that up. It could have been anyone's car, as Maggie said. Oh, that's for sure. Still, though, it could have been a car belonging to a guy named Howard Lansing. Couldn't it? Couldn't it? W why are you doing this? Come again. Well, you know that I'm not well. 
But all my life I've had nervous problems that, that... Oh, I can't believe it, but I must have dreamed it all up. Howard Lansing marrying him, going on a honeymoon across country and back, coming home last night, finding him murdered. I must have imagined it all. Maggie says I did. Dr. Sullivan says I did. So why are you... Why are you... You know something? I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's because, uh... Well, uh... Well, what? I, um... Uh, I kind of like you, and, uh... Well, uh, me, I didn't get much sleep either last night, uh, thinking about this whole thing, uh, thinking about you, and, uh... Well, I'm kind of wishing I could uh, straighten things out for you. That's... Very sweet of you, officer. But... Call me Ed. Ed? It's sweet of you. But you... You're wasting your time. I'm mentally... Mentally... Oh, come on now. Come on now. Don't cry. You had a bad dream, that's all. A, a nightmare. Oh, it was more than that. Much more than that. When you dream something, you wake up and you know it was a dream. I'm still living it. I remember the ceremony. The hotels we stayed at. The things we did. Even how it's... Fussing, constantly fussing with his new car. Yeah, there's, there's that car again. What do you mean, fussing with it? Oh, just, um, just that he was always polishing it, checking this and that, you know, fussing, that's all. And you remember all about the ceremony and uh, the hotels and like that? It's all as vivid as if it had actually happened. Tell me, tell me about the wedding, um... Who married you? Nobody married me, Ed. I imagined... Okay, okay. So where did you imagine you got married? A little town in Jersey. By a justice of the peace. What little town? What J.P.? I don't know. It was night and we just pulled off the Garden State Parkway. Howard had said he knew a place, a justice of the peace. Okay, okay. What about hotels? Well... I remember we stayed at the Ambassador in Chicago and the Statler in St. Louis, the Beverly in Los Angeles, and... Oh, that you, Maggie? Yes, Jen. Honey called when I... Oh. Uh, hello, Miss Brady. Aren't you the policeman who was here last night? Yeah, that's right. Uh, you're wondering what I'm doing here now, huh? Well, yes, I am. I just uh, dropped in to see how Jen was doing, that's all. Jen? Um, I mean, excuse me, uh, Miss Brady. I was never much for being formal. Yes, obviously. Have you been here long? No, uh, uh, ten minutes or so. Well, I don't mean to hurry you, officer, but Jennifer and I have an appointment in one hour with her psychiatrist, Dr. Sullivan. Uh, say, would that be Dr. Martin Sullivan on Park Avenue? No, Dr. Arnold Sullivan on East 82nd. Oh. You seem terribly interested in Jennifer's psychiatrist. <laughs> Me? Oh, no, no. I, I just ask a lot of questions. I, I trained myself. You trained yourself? <laughs> you're going to laugh. I, I, I know you're going to laugh, but uh, would you believe I, I want to be a detective someday? Of course I believe it. Why shouldn't I? Ask my sergeant. He thinks I'm something else wanting to be a detective. Laughs himself silly. Well, I certainly wouldn't laugh. I think it's commendable. You think I could make a detective? Of course you could. Well, uh, say, that's a real shot in the arm. I mean, someone like you thinking that uh, someone like me, uh, I mean, just a cop and uh, new on the force. At that, <clears throat> As uh, I said, officer, I don't like to hurry you, but... I'm we... going, going, Miss Brady. Uh, going right now. Nice seeing you again, Jen. I'll show you out. Oh, that's okay. Some detective I'd make if I couldn't find the front door. Uh, why, uh... uh... Jennifer, would you answer that, please? Of course. Oh, my God. Jennifer, what is it? Help me. Oh, my God, Maggie. Ed, help me. What? He's there. At the front door, he's there. Howard. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Is something... What was all the trouble? You were dead. Murdered. What? Last night after we got home from our honeymoon, I found you in your chair stabbed to death. Last night, hunting stab? Maggie, what is this? Jen's having another one of her spells, Howard, that's all. Oh, I see. What do you mean? You see? You see what? 
what just... Excuse me, who are you? Uh, my name is uh, Ed Helmut, uh, Officer Ed Helmut. I'm a cop. A cop? Uh, Howard, I'll explain later what went on here last night. I don't understand this. I don't understand it. You're talking to Howard as if nothing had happened. Well, for nothing did. He exists. He's standing right here. He exists. And last night you acted as if you'd never heard of him. As if there was no such person as Howard Lansing. Honey, I don't remember. You did, you did, you did. Never stop it. Now stop <gasps> it. Control yourself. <gasps> Officer, you were leaving. Uh, well, uh, there's some <gasps> questions I'd better get the answers to Officer, first. this uh, is a private matter. It's a family <clears throat> affair. Well, now that depends on how you look at it. <clears throat> Are you Howard Lansing? Of course I'm Howard Lansing. Why do you ask such a question? Howard, Jen had one of her her mental lapses last night. She imagined that you and she were married. We were. We and were. And that you would just come back from your honeymoon. Okay. And then during this hallucination, she thought she had found you with a, a knife in your chest. Dead. Oh, no, poor little Jenny. She ran screaming into the street. Luckily, I got her back into the house before she caused a disturbance, although this officer did hear the screams and came to investigate. Well, did you call Dr. Sullivan? Oh, of course, of course I did. He came over, but there wasn't much he could do except order some new sleeping pills. We're seeing him in his office at 11 this morning. Uh, just one more question, Mr. Lance. Yes? Just where do you fit in here? I mean, who are you? To the family, I mean. I'm Miss Brady's fiance, uh, Margaret, not Jennifer. Oh, I see. I uh, know. No, I'm afraid you don't see. Not all of it. Look, since we've gone this far, you might as well know the rest of it. Jennifer has always had a, well, a thing for Howard. She's not jealous that he's going to marry me and not her. I don't think that. But the whole situation has been a, a severe strain on her, a, a very severe strain. Almost certainly that's why her hallucination last night took the form that it did thinking she'd been married to me and all the rest of it. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, uh, I'll be on my way. Hey, 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 now, you you take it easy, huh? And me, uh, if it's okay with you, I'm, I'm going to be in touch. I'll, uh, I'll see my way out. Hey! Hey! Mr. Lansing! You have got a little red sports car. Well, yes, that's it. Parked at the curb. Why? Well, Jim, uh, uh, Miss Brady, she seemed to make a big thing out of it. On the honeymoon that didn't happen, I mean. Big thing? Well, what I mean, uh, she said you were always fussing with it, polishing it and like that. Sure looks as if you do. Well, I do. I'm a sports car buff of you. Want to know? I wish I could own a car like that. But on a cop salary, uh... <laughs> you had it long? Well, two or three months. Oh. How many miles you put on it? <laughs> you ask a lot of questions. <laughs> Just interested, that's all. Um, close to 10,000, I think. Well, that's a lot of miles in three months. I do a lot of driving. Your business, huh? Uh, no. I don't work. Don't have to. Just like to drive. Short trips, but they add up. Oh, boy. If I had a car like that, I'd go for long trips. Like, uh... Cross country. Well, maybe someday I will, but so far I haven't had the interest. Yeah. Well, see ya. Bye. Where is she? Upstairs, changing for appointment with Sullivan. I don't like this, Maggie. You don't like it. You don't like it. All the stupid things walking in here when that cop was here. I, I know he was here. If it comes to that, why did you let her run screaming into the street last night? Howard, come to your senses. Was there any other way? Uh, no, I, I guess there wasn't. I'm afraid we're going to have to move faster than we planned. Why? That young cop's pretty nosy. Come over here to the window. What? Look down there. <sighs> what the hell is he doing? He's measuring the size of your car from front to back wheel. What's he doing that for? I don't know. He's doing it. I don't like it. No, Howard, we're... We won't commit Jennifer now. Well, if we... If we don't commit her, what will we do with her? Kill her. Clearly, Maggie and Howard faked his murder. But how could they have managed it? And how will they kill Jennifer? 
We'll return shortly with Act Three. I'm High Brown, producer of Radio Mystery Theater. And as you may imagine, I'm excited about this new adventure in modern radio. This new statement of radio's marvelous power to stir the imagination. Now, we're wondering about your reaction, about who you are and how you like what we're doing. So to encourage you to get in touch with us, we're holding a drawing for three weeks. Fifty prizes a week, two AM-FM stereo phonos, two travel clock radios, and 46 anthologies of modern suspense. Just mail us your name and address, and you're eligible. Of course, we'd like knowing whether your glad radio drama is back, but name and address will do it. To Mystery Theater, Box 50, Radio City Station, New York, 119. That's Box 50, Radio City Station, New York, 119. All for good everywhere, unless locally prohibited. Chicken kitchen. We look like a kitchen because we deep fry up front right before your eyes. We don't pressure cook out of sight. Our chicken is naturally tender and crisp, golden flavor in every bite. Everything fresh, French fries, coleslaw, hot pie. Drop by Church's Fried Chicken Kitchen. The golden taste of Church's comes ringing through. Drop by Church's. shocked as I to discover that Howard Lansing is very much alive? I can't fathom it. Can you? No more than, well, ten minutes could have passed between the time Jennifer saw him slumped in that chair with a knife in his chest, blood all over everything, and the time Officer Helmut entered the room to find no body, no blood, nothing to indicate that a murder had taken place it would have been impossible for Howard Lansing and Margaret Brady to restore perfect order to that room in so short a time. Even to Howard's clothes and luggage no longer in the closet. A bone-dry bathtub and the rest of it. Got me puzzled? Well, we'll soon have the answer as we rejoin Maggie and Howard. Kill her. There's nothing else we can do. Well, we can do what we planned originally. Commit her. It won't work. Not now. Why not? Your answer is right out there in the street. The cop was just finished measuring your car. Uh, now, what's he doing? Quite obviously getting into your car. I think I'd better get out there and see what he's up to. I was just about to suggest it, Howard. Officer, what are you doing in my car? Oh, say, uh, Mr. Lansing. Say, I hope you don't mind. Uh, uh, like I told you, I, I want to own a little sports car like this myself someday. And, uh, well, I just couldn't help uh, uh, sitting behind the wheel. Say, I hope you don't mind. As a matter of fact, I do mind. Oh. Well, say, uh, please excuse me. I just, I just kind of flip over a car like this, that's all. Is that why you were measuring the wheelbase? Measuring? Oh, that. Yes, that. I saw you from the window. Yeah. Well, now, I tell you, I, I want to get to be a detective someday, see? And I'm, I'm studying, like, uh, fingerprints and stains and like that and uh, measuring. Now, measuring things is important, very important. Uh, you'd be surprised how important measuring things is. So, I take every opportunity to measure things. Oh, uh, yes. Well... Like last night. Were you here last night? Oh, no, I was not here last night. <laughs> Funny. What's funny? Well, last night, uh, Jennifer, um, Miss Brady, she said a car, in fact, your car, was parked outside here. Only it wasn't. I mean, when we looked, no car. Well, I just told you that... Yeah, but there had been a car. You see, it had rained, and the car was standing out here during the rain and left a dry space in the street. <laughs> and I, I measured that, too. Couldn't help myself. It's become a habit, you know? Well, I fail to see what this has to do with Identical. anything. Identical. Same wheelbase. 
that car and this one. Look, there are probably thousands of sports oh, cars I'm, in New York. I'm not saying it was the same car. Oh, oh no, nothing like that. I'm only saying the wheelbase was the same. It's very interesting, I'm sure. But if you don't mind now, I... Just I'm... leaving when you came out. I apologize if I upset you getting in behind the wheel without permission. Uh, that's all right. Yeah. Well, goodbye. Oh, uh, by the way... Now what? You got... 11,243 and nine-tenths miles on the speedometer. A thousand or so more than you said you had. I just thought you'd like to know. Thank you. I'm deeply grateful for that information. He is up to something, Maggie. What else is new? He checked the mileage on the car. What of it? Over 11,000 miles. I could easily have driven from here to L.A. and back, which I did. Mileage shows only how far a car went, not where. I'm not worried about your car. I'm worried about him nosing around. The quicker we kill Jennifer, the better. Now look, I didn't bargain for anything like murder. Neither did I, but that's the way it is. How will you do it? How will we do it? Sleeping pills. An overdose. That's the simplest. When? Oh, tonight. Why wait? Oh, Jennifer. Uh, ready for our appointment with Dr. Sullivan, I see. Hmm? Yes, I'll just get my coat. Howard? Yes, Jennifer. I'm sorry if I... If I've caused you any trouble. Oh, no. I'm losing my mind, Howard. I must be. Marrying you, our honeymoon trip across the country, returning last night, finding you... Dad, it was all so real. So real. And yet it wasn't. It never happened. And, uh, oh, Howard, I, I just can't go on like this much longer. You won't, Jennifer. Believe me, you won't. Did you check all marriage license applications? For... And there's no Howard Lansing and Jennifer Brady, huh? I'll be your at Beverly Hotel, Los Angeles. Uh, right there. Okay, uh, sorry I troubled you. Thanks. Uh, hello. Yeah. Yeah, how far back did you check your guest register? And there's no Mr. and Mrs. Howard Lansing. Hey, Ed, another one. The ambassador of Chicago. You going on a trip or something, man? Thanks. Uh, Officer Ed Helmet here. Yeah, I think I can tell you what you're going to tell me before you tell me. Uh, no record of a Mr. and Mrs. Howard Lansing. Yeah. Well, thanks. Hmm. There's got to be a clue. There's got to be. Did you give her? Enough. What's the matter, Howard? Why that look on your face? I'm a murderer. <laughs> I'm just beginning to realize it. I am a murderer. Not yet, Howard. She won't be dead for a while. How can you be so calm? You, you frighten me, Maggie. I've never seen this side of you before. You've got to be kidding. All the time we spent planning this... To commit her, not murder her. What's the difference? not doing all this for peanuts, you know. We inherited a million and a half dollars from my father, Jennifer, and I. You and I will have all of it once she... Who could that be? I'll see. Wait. No, I guess we can't pretend no one's at home. The lights are all on. And my car's parked out front. Oh, it's you. Okay, if I come in, Mr. Lance. Oh, well, no, I... I uh... Thanks. Rotten night out there. It's just plain rotten. It's, uh... It's Officer Helmet, Maggie. Yes, so I see. Getting to be a regular visitor, aren't you? Well, to be honest with you, Miss Brady, it's a real nasty night, and uh, walking a beat, uh, I didn't think you'd mind if I came in for a few minutes. Uh, also, I wanted to see how Jen's getting along. Jen is getting along very well, if it's any concern of yours, which it is not. Oh, well, I only... Officer Helmet, circumstances beyond my control brought you into this house last night, but I do control whether you'll keep coming here like this. Please leave. Oh, well, now, uh, wait a minute, Miss Brady. I, I like your sister, and I have reason to think she likes me. Uh, 
Now, 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 wait, now, wait a second. Just wait a second. I also think she needs somebody like me, somebody to lean on, to protect her. Of all And the further nurse. than that, I'm here on official business. Official business? I'm placing you both under arrest on a charge of... Where is Jen? That's no business of yours. What's all this about? Where is she? She is upstairs asleep, if you must know. Asleep? At 8 o'clock at night? She took a couple of sleeping pills. Where are you going? How dare you go up there? Maggie, Maggie, my God. Any nerve, don't lose it now. But he'll know. He'll know she took an overdose. That's all he will know. He will know that we gave it to her. He's arresting us. For what? On what charge? Whatever it is, he'll never make it stick. We've covered our tracks too well for the law to... He's carrying her down. All right, baby. It's going to be all right. Operator, this is Officer Ed Helmet. I want an ambulance sent to 127 Brockhurst. And fast. An ambulance? Why an ambulance? An overdose of sleeping pills. She took a... She didn't take them, Buster. They were given to her. Shoved down her throat, you ask me. I'm changing the charge against you two. I'm booking you for attempted murder. You must be out of your mind. You're as crazy as my sister. Who isn't crazy at all. That was a real far-out scene you two tried to pull. I gotta hand it to you two. You planned it so careful, so good. There wasn't a loophole in it. Except one. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you don't, huh? Then let me explain. You set the whole thing up, the two of you. The marriage, the honeymoon trip across country and back, the fake murder and the whole bit. Oh, and you played it smart. Very smart. Not a clue. I checked the marriage license bureau. No license. Easy enough. You could have bribed a clerk to destroy it. Now, look, you... I checked a few hotels. The big ones like uh, the Ambassador, the Beverly in Los Angeles. No Mr. and Mrs. Howard Lansing listed. A piece of cake. When you registered, you gave a different name. You're making yourself look like a fool. What you're saying is you could find no evidence. Oh, but I did. One little clue that neither of you thought about. A car, Mr. Lansing. Your pretty little red sports car. I, I don't follow. You will. I told you I found that dry space out on the street last night because a car, a little sports car like yours, had been standing there during the rain. Or it could have been anyone's car. Sure. Same size as yours. Same wheelbase, but I agree, it could have been anyone's. Only it wasn't. It was yours. You want to know how I know? We'd be enthralled. I know, because last night, that car wasn't parked outside this house, but the one next door. I got to wondering about that. I kept saying to myself, if it was his car, why did he park outside the house next door? I came up with the answer today when I entered that house. Nobody there. And found fake blood all over the upstairs room. A gag knife. The kind you attach so it looks like you're stabbed. Even your clothes and your luggage in the closet. Mr. Lansing. Oh, God. So you see, if it hadn't been for your car, I'd never have realized that brownstone houses in a row like these are identical. You bought this place, or leased it while Jen and him were on their honeymoon, didn't you, Miss Brady? I... Last night, when Jen went screaming into the street, you deliberately let her run into the street so you could bring her back to the house next door. This house. And her state wound up tight like she was. She never realized what you were doing, as you knew she wouldn't. You'll have to prove these accusations. I will. I can't. With the one little clue that nails it all down at all four corners. The little red sports car again. What about it? Well, you told me you'd never driven across country. I never have. If you're thinking of the mileage on the car, that proves nothing. Well, not the mileage, Mr. Lansing. The servicing. Servicing? You had it serviced at the Beverly Hotel in Los Angeles. A lube job, oil change, new filter, the works... And like they do at all service stations, they slap the little sticker on the door jam. That little sticker that carries the name and address of the service station. That little sticker that practically nobody ever notices. Anyhow, you didn't. And it says, Beverly Hotel Service Station, Los Angeles, California. Date and all. <laughs> Easy, Jen. Easy. Mm -hmm. You're going to be okay. From here on in, you're going to be just fine. <laughs> mm. 
must have been a costly business, buying or leasing that identical brownstone house and furnishing it exactly like the one next door. But then, Maggie had all the money in the world. Or thought she did. I'll return shortly. Harold? Mm Mm-hmm? I'm cold. Yeah, I know, dear. Now, I'll, I'll have this fire going in just a minute. Are you sure you know what you're doing? We haven't used that fireplace in years. Oh, there's, there's nothing to it. Now, I'll, I'll just strike this match. There. Should be going good in just a minute. Harold, uh-huh. isn't the smoke supposed to go up the chimney? Yeah, it is. <laughs> a fire in the fireplace is one answer to the energy crisis. But the American Red Cross reminds you to be sure that your chimney and damper are cleaned and in good working order. In addition, build the fire toward the back. Keep screens around the fireplace. Don't use kerosene, lighter fluid, or gasoline to start fires. And don't leave a roaring fire unattended. For other tips on safety, contact your local Red Cross chapter. Like a spider's web, so strong and yet so weak, the human brain can be broken. But happily, again, like the spider's web, it can be repaired as good as new. Our cast included Lois Nettleton, Tony Roberts, Terry Keene, and Norman Rose. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. Mr. Peterson, if I were you, I'd forget everything that happened tonight. Is that a threat? No. A warning. That's all I've been getting around here, warnings. Well, for your own good, take them seriously. And if I don't? You'll regret it for the rest of your life, which may not be a long one. You still insist that you're not threatening me? I'm only trying to help you. Really? And why should you do that? Why? (laughs) I don't know why. Maybe it's because the last guy tried to help me. What last guy? I didn't listen to him. The last guy? What do you mean? Uh, Nothing. Forget it. You know, with you and your wife, it seems, everything turns out to be nothing and forget it. I don't think it matters now. I have an idea it's already too late for you. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams...